and then it goes right back into it. <laughs> oh man, that's so cool. There's a couple different things going on here, one of them being speed ramping, there's obviously tracking of the basketball, and the other one was an experiment on my behalf. For the first time, I was utilizing generative AI inside Photoshop to pull off this technique to accentuate the rotation of the video. I'm gonna get into all of that in this tutorial, so let's hop right in. The normal problem with doing this is when you rotate, you just, you get <laughs> black bars on the side. And if you were to watch this and just have me rotate like this, it wouldn't be as cool of a shot, right? So we're going to be using generative AI to fill in these black spaces. And in order to do that, I'm going to find a nice frame here. When I shot this, I made sure to keep myself inside the frame. What I did not do, uh, and I should have done, is put my feet all the way in the frame. So what ends up happening is uh, I'm gonna have toes that are generated from AI. <laughs> well, hopefully it will turn out okay, but let's go ahead and pick a nice frame here that we can generate. I'll click this and there is our still image. So I'm just gonna call this reference one export that. I'll open that up in Photoshop. And the first thing that I want to do is make the canvas size two times the amount of whatever is going on here. And I'm going to go by percent. So I'll do 100 on the width and 100 on the height. Now we have more real estate here. The next thing is our rectangular marquee tool and just draw right before the edge. And the reason I'm doing this is so that Photoshop has a reference to the outside edges of my frame. If I didn't do this, then it would just kind of create whatever it wants to inside the background. So now we have generative fill. I need to hit shift command I so it highlights everything else besides inside that rectangle and click this. And I'm not even gonna put anything in what I would like to generate. I'm just gonna tell it to generate and see what we get. Man, it is insane what you can do <laughs> these days. Look at that. Well, <laughs> there's my toes, but uh, that's okay. We can push in on the video, but uh, that's <laughs> that looks quite uh, interesting. The rest of it, though, looks great. I think this is perfect for what I need. With that in mind, I'm going to keep this and just export a PNG. Now that we have the reference PNG, I'm not gonna bring this into my main sequence because I wanna create a new sequence with the correct parameters of that bigger PNG. And you'll see why here in a second. So here's that reference PNG. I'm going to bring this over to this little paper icon to create a new sequence with it. And the reason I do that is because this sequence is going to be the exact width and height of my PNG. What it is not though is 24 frames per second. So I need to change that. I'm gonna go up here to sequence, sequence settings, and change this to 23.976. Now I'm going to bring in my clip right over the top of it in my reference one wider. And there are some differences in the lighting because obviously the sun is changing, but for the most part, it works. So what I'm gonna do is go over here to my opacity and let's just draw a mask around myself take this and feather it so we blend into the image behind. The next thing I'm gonna do is my speed ramping here in this sequence and then bring that into the main sequence that we'll be working with. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see what we're doing. I'm gonna hold command to create a keyframe right there. If you've never speed ramped inside Premiere Pro before, uh, it's pretty simple once you go to the time remapping. Right here, I've hold command and clicked on my keyframing right there. And if I hold down the mouse and click on one side of the line, it will allow me to change the speed on the other side. So this is what it looks like now. And then as it comes back down, I want it to speed back up. So I'm gonna hold command and make another keyframe right there. And we will speed back up to 100%. So for right now, it looks something like this. 
uh, instead of having an abrupt stop, what I want to do is have a gradual slowdown and speed up. So if you see right here, we have some arrows. And if I click on this, we can widen this. And that creates a little decline down to the slow part. So whoop. another thing you can do is make it not linear. So we can make it logarithmic or exponential by clicking in this little negative space right here and using these handles to create a little curve. Now that we have our nested sequence ready, I'm gonna go back to my main sequence and we'll just move this down the timeline as a reference. And here is that nested sequence we were just working on. I'm gonna drag this into our main sequence. Now, when we rotate our footage, we, instead of getting black bars, we have <laughs> generative fill done on our clip. All we have to do now is track our ball. Let's first get our ball into the exact middle. And we need to bring up our guides and our rulers. Now, down here on my buttons, I've already done that. So show rulers and guides are down here in my buttons. But again, if you don't see that, we're gonna go down to the button editor, click that, and then you would bring in your guides and your rulers, but I've already done that. So I'm gonna click this to bring up my rulers, and then I'm going to click this to bring up my guides. To create a guide, we're going to click and drag down from the top. And right here, you can see that it gives you a percentage. So if I want this to be in the exact middle, I'll go to 50. Another way that you could do this, let me delete this, is right click, add guide. Position is at 50 from the top, percent. It's already 50, so I'm gonna do that. Hit okay, and then right click over here, add guide. I want the orientation to be vertical this time, and I want it to be 50% from the left. Hit okay, and there is our exact center. I want to start with this ball in the exact center. One thing that I'm going to do on top of this is create a top, bottom, and sides guides to keep the ball basically in a square as opposed to trying to keep a point in the middle. But it's important to get the anchor point right in the very beginning because you're going to be keyframing this throughout the clip. If you don't keyframe it right in the beginning, it's just gonna be a massive headache towards the ending of your keyframe. I'm gonna take my anchor point right here and move it up to the center of the ball that we have. I'm going to turn on toggle animation for my anchor point and toggle animation for my rotation. From here on out, make sure that you're only adjusting the anchor point and the rotation. Sometimes you will want to adjust the scale, but for right now, I wanna make sure that I only adjust rotation and anchor point. This is super important because sometimes throughout this process, you might accidentally do position and it will create a lot of problems for you down the line. So I've created those and I'll go a couple frames and adjust my anchor point so that I'm in the center like that and here's what it looks like. You can already see what the technique will eventually become. Let's go a couple more frames in. So I've started to spin the ball, and I think what I might do is wait until it's about right there, and then start spinning to line up with this line. I'm gonna take my anchor point and move it up to where I need to. And now, let's go back to my first keyframe, Take my rotation, and we haven't started rotating yet, but we will on this next keyframe. And the reason why we move the anchor point is because it's easier to spin or turn around the anchor point than if we were to move the position and turn around an anchor point then. <laughs> this is the tedious part of the project, so I might speed this up, and then you can see kind of what the final result is of all of this keyframing. So pop that <laughs> that's that looks sweet the only other thing that i did with this piece of content is take it and towards the end when i hit this position right here i reverse it so i'm gonna find a good spot to do that right there i'm gonna hit delete then i'm gonna hold option click and drag a duplicate of this over I'm gonna highlight that, right click and go to speed duration and just reverse it. 
hit OK. And here's what we're left with. Pop. And then it goes right back into it. <laughs> oh, man. That's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. You could put some music and other things behind that, but there is the general gist of that video clip. Just doing some sweet tracking, generative fill with AI and uh, Premiere Pro Photoshop. It's a neat little technique that you could utilize on your next uh, video short, whatever you want to do. My name is Javier Mercedes, and I hope you are out there living a life of abundance. Until next time, bye.